Good, very good. I'm so glad that I get to speak about blockchain. Um, recently, I've looked at the um, Gartner, uh, the curve of technology adoption. And there are so many technologies that have been mentioned like artificial intelligence, smart homes, blockchain, machine learning, um, uh, smart dust, and then you have um, um, uh, various other technologies which are explained in that. Now, it's interesting legend is there, which are the technologies are uh, at a real hype right now, and which technologies are close to less than two years of adoption cycle, and some of the technologies which are five to seven years, and some of them are more than 10 years of adoption. Interestingly, artificial intelligence is uh, uh, two years, two years of adoption that they have mentioned, which means it's coming into mainstream now. The blockchain is mentioned saying that the mainstream adoption is five to seven years, which essentially is what internet was in 90, between 94 and 98. Okay, people were talking about internet, there is something that is coming in, and people are able to send emails, go to the websites, but they didn't think about they can shop, they can date, they can buy, they can do all the things that they are doing today, right? Video talking, all the stuff. So those are the use cases I would say. If you look at internet as a technology, how it is going to be adopted are the use cases. The use cases are email, e-commerce, um, communication, video chat, messengers, all those are the use cases. Now coming to blockchain, interestingly, it all started at, you know, I think between 2007 to 2008 time frame, and Bitcoin is the main uh, use case that brought the blockchain to the mainstream attention that there is a technology that everyone should look at. Um, today, after nine to 10 years, the industry is talking about it. Academia is doing a lot of research on it. And the youngsters, they are really catching the technology and moving with a pace. Um, which the traditional industry is trying to catch up. And there is also fear of uh, missing out. A lot of people are looking at different use cases. Um, there, is, there are massive consortiums that have been formed, like R3 Consortium, uh, which they launched Coda, Hyperledger Consortium, which is led by Linux Foundation. And there are different consortiums in different world. And if you come to Kenya, we have a blockchain task force, and we have a blockchain association. And then we have um, the think tank groups and meetup groups and many of them are. So this is what is happening when you talked about hype of blockchain, right? It's real. What it is, it is a, a technology which is essentially trying to fix the uh, trust issues in the business. Today, if you have to do business, number one, either you have to know each other. So there is a known parties which are transacting between each other. That's the first case. The second, if you don't know each other, then you need it trusted intermediary. For example, if I know you, Sarah, if I have to pay you $100, we both know each other, we both are able to talk in person, then I can simply exchange the money with you. But if I don't know you, and you are in Kenya, and I am in uh, Rwanda, and if you have to do transaction together, we have to trust somebody called Standard Chartered Bank, or Barclays Bank, or something. That's an intermediary. The intermediary is there in most transactions today being it a financial transaction, education, uh, manufacturing, commerce, trading, all this stuff. So blockchain is essentially trying to fix the trust gap using the technology, removing these intermediaries. Why to remove those intermediaries? One is cost, the second is time. It takes a lot of time, the resources. And two, the shared economy is gaining so much of momentum that people today are asking like, why do I need somebody in between when technology can help me to transact and do things at a much faster pace at a cheaper cost. So that's essentially blockchain is trying to solve a bigger uh, puzzle or a problem. How does it do it? It's a distributed ledger mechanism where all the parties who are involved in the transaction will have a copy of the ledger. The ledger will have all the transactions. If we four of us are involved in, in, in a business, each one of us will have a copy of the ledger. And all the transactions that are done with the parties uh, get updated in each of us. So that's technology is bringing the trust. Why? Because they, you can't have another ledger, I can't have another ledger, all of us have the same picture. Now, uh, the that is, if it is a, a, a forum where millions of people have to get involved and have to start trusting each other to do the transactions, um, you need an open and public blockchain. 
which means there is no authority or there is no there is no control on it it's open example is bitcoin now if you want to do more enterprise level transactions or government controlled transactions like issuing a passport or doing a land records or doing a cargo tracking in those cases you need a private blockchain private blockchain is essentially the concept is same as a public blockchain distributed ledger exists but only the trusted and vetted parties are participating in in the blockchain the great example of that is hyperledger hyperledger is uh, by linux foundation and ibm is spearheading uh, and we are also partners in implementing hyperledger so that is a technology and there is a hype but it is real all technology companies ibm microsoft oracle everybody is in it everybody has an offering and system integrators and um, the product companies like uh, technobrain we are building products to give solutions to provide solutions to our customers governments and regulatory bodies are really looking into it in terms of regulating in terms of providing platforms in kenya one of the key initiative is that we have a blockchain task force singapore already released the regulations um, uae has a regulation and all the other countries like uk switzerland everybody is looks seriously looking into it malta has um, approved three bills uh, two weeks back on creating a formidable ground for the blockchain adoption um, and the youngsters and the consumers also started looking at it because consumers want to know today what they are consuming where it has come from let's say if you go to nakumart or carrefour or uchimi and buy a, a bread or a apple you want to know essentially where it has come from right? and some of the fair trade practices wants to know that um, there are fair trades that are involved in uh, producing this food or a diamond or a manufactured product so there is a wherever traceability and provenance is required people are looking at that many people today individuals are looking at blockchain as a cryptocurrency because that is a lack of understanding also number one number two that is what is a quick momentum that is happening everybody is talking about the bitcoin value going up ethereum value going up eos is coming raise four billion dollars icos are happening every other day there is a new protocol that gets um, released in the market and there is a rush there uh, people see that it is a internet of money right and there is a gold rush initial rush that is there uh, but after you understand uh, what essentially the technology is you will cross that um, uh, you will cross that uh, milestone and start getting a deeper understanding of the blockchain and where it can be um, applicable to solve real life problems then you will see whole lot of use cases happening like the way i told you uh, when internet came in 94 we didn't envision a video skype like a thing we didn't envision whatsapp like things but for all these use cases uber airbnb for all this to come to existence internet is a backbone a technology if internet is not there we wouldn't have seen all this right similarly on the blockchain as a foundation technology now we are going to see whole lot of use cases one is micro payments payment rails then you will see a cross border transactions uh, you will see a trade finance you will see a cargo tracking you will see a traceable of products then you will also have uh, enterprise use cases that we are building for the governments like uh, uh, credential issuing like ids universities issuing their credentials like certificates um, manufacturing point to point knowing everything on how it is moving um, at every point when multiple parties are involved so you have use cases in insurance in banking in manufacturing in public sector in academic space in consumer space so we are essentially about i would agree with uh, what i read on the um, is, um, internet about gartner idc and forester what they are saying that we are about 5 years into mainstream adoption and whoever whichever companies get deep into it and build the solutions they will become the um, beneficiaries of the benefits i say yes africa i say yes in fact i i would not hesitate to say that africa can become the early adopter and faster adopter of uh, blockchain technology as compared to the developed world because developed world there is so much of unlearning that is required the financial institutions the infrastructure the regulation anything anything new that comes in it takes time 
Um, yeah, for example, look at a case like M-Pesa. Why developed world could not uh, have something like M-Pesa even today? And M-Pesa is a 20-year case study for Kenya, right? Um, if uh, America wanted to do it, they could have done it easily, isn't it? But it's not the case. Mobile money is still when people from US and Europe, they come here, they get surprised looking at the mobile money. So coming back to our discussion of blockchain, Africa is, uh, can be a faster and early adopter of blockchain. Because why the foundational technologies are there? For blockchain, the foundational technology is one is internet. Right? The second one is the cryptography. It's already matured. Cryptography is also matured. Okay? The third is the uh, communication channels and the community. Right? That is, look at, go to Strathmore University, go to uh, uh, USIU, or go to Jomo Kenyatta University, Nairobi University, any university, actually the kids are talking more than us. They actually know more than the people in the corporate world. Okay, because they are catching it faster and they see it as a very exciting technology. So because the foundational technology is available and also the peer-to-peer -peer transaction is already a proven ground in Africa using uh, mobile money and um, the other shared economy services like Uber and all the stuff. Um, I believe that Africa can be an early and faster adapter of blockchain technology, also a great beneficiary of blockchain technology. One is the um, academic institutions have to uh, invest in the research and start building the ecosystems, which, which is happening to a certain extent, but it needs to gain a lot of momentum. What would that do is it will create a talent pool in the, in the market, in the industry. Right? If you don't have people who understand the technology, they will essentially not be able to consume it also. So that's the first thing. Second thing is regulators need to move quick and uh, put the foundation principles um, in order to create an ecosystem that can grow. Uh, like if you look at Singapore, UAE, Malta, Estonia, Switzerland, they are moving very fast. And all the money is getting created there. Why? Because everybody is moving there because there is a certainty and there's a regulation. We have seen Uganda. Uganda also, Binance has come exchange was set up and the government also very positive. Uh, in the similar way, all the countries uh, leadership regulatory um, regulator has to quickly put the frameworks in place that will create a, a standard will set the standard third thing is the um, the um, um, the mainstream to make it mainstream there has to be consortiums need to be formed okay, lo may, some consortiums are formed like I said R3 consortium hyperledger consortium there are a couple of other consortiums are there but in every country and in every county, a local level consortium need to be formed. Right? A consortium example is a university and a system integrator or an independent software vendor like Technobrain, um, a product uh, um, OEM like an IBM, a manufacturing company and a regulatory authority, um, an institution and some, um, some other technology providers. All of them can come together and form a consortium for insurance for banking because they understand the problems and technicalities in that particular space. So this local level consortiums, when they get formed, then the adoption becomes easier and they also become a think tank and they also become a spearheader to get the technology into a, an adoption. So academic institutions doing research and building the talent pool, a regulator putting the framework and standards in place and industry coming together, captains coming together and forming the consortiums, I think it will create a solid ground for the adoption. Yes, um, we, have, we have formed a, a blockchain academy and uh, we did a couple of blockchain seminars where the turnout was great and we have seen young people, corporate people and the government people also coming in for those seminars. Next week we are launching a boot camp um, which is a paid course but still people have joined and uh, that shows the interest in the, in the industry and the market. So that's one main initiative of blockchain academy. And this blockchain academy in Africa is launching courses across Africa. So that will create free courses and as well as paid courses. Um, that will create the required talent in the market. And we also have a blockchain incubator. Uh, we have um, joined hands with uh, some protocols like EOS. And we are also inviting other protocols as well. This blockchain incubator will recruit uh, to start with uh, 20 people cohort initially. 
and uh, train them um, and nurture their ideas and also uh, bring their ideas into the market by providing all the resources that are required. So that's a blockchain incubator is the second one. Third, we already partnered with Microsoft. Microsoft has initially launched um, blockchain, um, Azure blockchain as a developer service. Now it's called Blockchain Workbench and we are the early adopters and we are building some use cases in the, um, um, in the electronic cargo tracking system and also the credential issuing system. And that's a very strong partnership we have with Microsoft. And we also have a partnership with Hyperledger, IBM. And IBM has been um, the initial core member of the Hyperledger consortium. Um, today they have a commercial grade um, blockchain protocol which can be implemented for private blockchains. And we have a team. We have uh, a team of six people in Nairobi and we have a team of uh, five people in uh, Hyderabad. These are building all the uh, smart contracts and chain codes in um, Hyperledger. And these include, um, again, um, the AgriChain, which is used for agricultural products for the traceability, and uh, motor vehicle registrations, um, the uh, revenue authorities, the uh, cross-border cargo tracking, and uh, the credential issuing. And there are some interesting um, use cases which we are building, which can become a, a peer-to-peer -peer transaction model which will come uh, very soon into the market. Uh, I'm not able to provide more details right now. Um, but these are the interesting things that are happening. And what's happening within Technobrain is, initially we got this um, couple of people who are blockchain experts. Now we see there's a lot of interest from other groups within Technobrain, the other strategic business units saying that, hey, can I try to look at my use cases, which I'm doing tax and customs, I'm doing identity management, I'm doing a public finance management, I'm providing a, um, um, an ERP solution and a portal solutions. What are the areas where we can look at implementing this? And people are uh, learning, getting onto the bandwagon. So we are going to see within Technobrain, there's going to be a lot and a lot of action on blockchain.